Hello everybody, and welcome to another episode in the introduction to scripting. Last episode, which I know was a long time ago, but um, I had a lot of studying and schoolwork to do, so I apologize, but um, last episode we went over code blocks, if statements, and conditional statements. And today we're going to kind of continue on that same path. We're um, going to go over more with conditional statements and maybe a bit more with code blocks. And then I really want to get into what a code block really is um, probably in the next episode or two. But I really want to get um, this whole conditional statement thing down because it's a big deal in programming. So let's go ahead and hide this up there to make some more room and we're going to go to server script service and create a new script like always now you guys are going to notice last episode I had a dark background and like a custom version of the scripting editor well at some point recently Roblox Studio updated and I lost my configurations and honestly it's just it's not worth going through all of that again I know I probably documented it somewhere what it should look like but um, like all the values, but I'm not going to change it back. Hopefully you guys don't mind this. This is probably what it looks like for you anyway, so hopefully it works out well. Alright, so last episode we went over stuff like local is computer working equals false, and local is today bad equals true, and then we'd compare those like if is computer working or is today bad then and this would return true and this would happen whatever's in here so it would print when like crying if the computer wasn't working or today is bad or if both were true um, so in this case it would be true because is today bad is true what we're going to go over today though is a different type of conditional statement what we went through already was just simple true or false variables and ultimately that's all a conditional statement is it's true and false variables everything in a conditional statement must eventually boil down to either true or false but the thing is is they don't have to start that simple they can start as complex as um, this so we could do a equals 2 B equals 3 and C equals wait hold on let me think of a good one for this so actually we're going to use 6 and 8 and come on fingers there we go 6 and 8 and 10 okay and this will be the Pythagorean theorem so we could do if a uh, math.pow which if you guys know what powers is, and I might have gone over this already, but math.pow is like power, so it's the same as like 2 squared would be, well, let's do a different number. So 3 squared would be 3, 2, like that, okay? So square, the second number is the exponent, and the first number is the base. So the base here is a, and then 2, so a squared plus b, or math.pow, b, 2, equals math.pow c2 and you guys might recognize this as I said already as the Pythagorean theorem which is um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared right well okay a is 6 so 6 squared is 36 and B is 8 and 8 squared is 64 and of course we know 36 and 64 equal 100 which 10 or C is 10 and 10 squared is 100 so yes these two do in fact equal that it's a good Pythagorean theorem and it's actually kind of one of the most basic versions of the Pythagorean theorem that you see in your textbooks all the time but I'm not here to teach you guys math I'm here to teach you guys programming okay so but actually that's a really good example so I don't know why I did that alright so you guys see okay this side is a hundred right so we're going to rewrite this in a comment down here if 100 equals 100 then okay that's essentially what this is because this is boiling down to a hundred and this is already a hundred and then this equal sign when you put an equal sign an equal sign is a um, conditional operator it's 
I don't think that's the correct term for it, but it gets the idea across, and that's what my videos are primarily for. So an equal double equal sign means is it equal to, and I might have gone over this before already, but I don't think I have. So a single equal sign sets something to something. So up here, a equals six. Okay, we're setting the variable a, which yes, we just created, and yeah, I didn't put local. I should actually probably put local. Even though it's not necessary, it's already in the global scope, and the localized item in the global scope is still in the global scope, but we're not going to go into all of that. Um, a, B, and C are here. Okay, so they're being defined right here, created, and then they're being set to a value. So A is set to 6, B is set to 8, C is set to 10, right? We got that. Okay, down here, this is seen as one value because the equals equals sign or any conditional operator kind of thing like that is actually a lot like say the and or the or um, words that we were, went over last time is on one they have two sides and on each side whatever the value is on each side determines what it does okay so this whole thing here is ultimately going to end up in the conditional statement as one value it's going to end up as either true or false and what makes it true or false is actually these two equal signs here on each side of the two equal signs and this is a lot like your basic math you've just and double equal signs I know I just went over the one equal sign double equal signs just quickly double equal signs means is equal to so is this equal to this that's the question that the double equal signs are asking so is 100, which is basically what this turns into because a squared plus b squared equals 100 in this instance, is this equal to 100? Is 100 equal to 100? Yes, okay? So since 100 is equal to 100, this equal sign, which is asking is this equal to this, this whole thing is going to now be read in by the if statement basically as true because it's already it's like okay I see you've got a complicated thing in front of me and as an if statement I don't know how to do this so I'm going to pass this on to somebody else <coughs> the equals equal sign the math people and I'm going to have them figure out if your math is correct and if this equals it and if they tell me yes then okay I'm going to know that it's true and I'm going to do what I'm told if they tell me no, then okay, I'm bowing out, I'm done for today, okay? So this is getting passed into the math and it becomes true. If only cares about true and false, but you can put things that aren't necessarily exactly true or false to begin with by doing it this way. So this is true, this will return true. And I know that's a long-winded way of saying that this turns into this, which turns into if true then which of course is always true now the good reason for this is when you have variables that you don't necessarily know what the value of the variable is because maybe it's based on user input or something and so the user input would change the value and so you need to check if the value is correct so say we were making a quiz um, and the quiz was like what is 2 plus 2 and you had three options you could click like 1 you could click 8 and you could click 4 now, if you clicked 4, then okay, it would be true, but if you clicked either of the other numbers, it would still have to check because you'd be wrong. Okay, so that's the good thing to this. So you can do math, you can do equals operators, but what if we set this to 11? And I'm going to actually go back to where we had this here still. What if we set this to 11? Okay, so 100 does not equal, okay, 100 does not equal. 1 to 121 which we know 11 times 11 is 121 and 11 squared is the exact same thing as 11 times 11 so it's 121 so this is actually going to return false it's not going to do whatever we put in here even though it's still basically the same thing like this line literally hasn't changed from how we see it but the variable has a different value so now this is going to return false However, what if we wanted to check if a value was, say, greater than another value? So we'd use this, the greater than operator. So, well, actually, it's the less than operator. But if this 
is less than this then. And we know that's true because 100 is less than 121. So it's going to continue. Another way is the actual greater than symbol. So if 100 were greater than 121, then do this. We know it's not, so this is going to return false. But you can also do that. And there's a third way, and this works on both less than and equal, or less than and greater than, and you can put an equal sign after it. So now, instead of reading, is this greater than this, it's reading, is this greater than or equal to this? Okay, so we could have 100 is greater than or equal to 100, that would be true or 100 is greater than or equal to 90, okay? Both of those would be true in this circumstance. Or we could have this, so is 100 less than or equal to 121? Yes. Is 100 less than or equal to 100? Yes. Is 100 less than or equal to 90? No, okay? Because now we have less than or equal to, all right? And I know it looks kind of like an arrow pointing this way, but just separate it, okay? It's less than or equal to. So that's how math can be used in these conditional uh, uh, statements. And ugh, I'm already at 11 minutes, but we'll continue. So math can be used in this. You can also do strings. So let's say you wanted to check if a string that somebody typed in somewhere was equal to like, let's say you were asking them what is the name of the apple that comes from apple trees, or <laughs> the apple, <laughs> sorry. What is the name of the fruit that comes from apple trees? And if they typed in apple, then yes, it'd be apple. Um, and you'd continue, but if they didn't type in apple, then you'd say, oh, nope, that's wrong. You'd use a conditional statement to check if the string the user typed in was equal to apple, which would be the correct answer. If it wasn't equal to apple, then you'd know, okay, well, that failed and you're an idiot. But okay, we'll continue on with our day and you're just wrong. So you could do it for strings. You can really do it for anything. And you'll see us using this time and time again. And hopefully you guys are getting the idea, though, that a conditional statement ultimately is just true or false. And depending upon true or false is like this whole thing is just returning true. Okay. So here, let's go ahead and change this to this and let's cut this out. Local Pythagorean theorem test equals this. Oy vey. So if that, that's a long variable name. I suggest coming up with something shorter typically. But if, and that's actually even misspelled. Pythagorean, no, it's Pythagorean. So if local Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem test equals this, and since 100 equals 100, which I, you guys might not have noticed, but I changed C back to 10, making it 100. So if 100 equals 100, or is less than or equal to 100, we should change that back to equals equals, um, then it's good. And by the way, there's a, another operator so we have equals equals, also known as is equal to. Equals equals is just why I normally say because it's two equal signs. But it means is equal to. So is equal to, is less than, is greater than, is less than or equal to, or, and, not or, and is greater than or equal to. But there's also another one which is is not equal to, oh sorry, is not equal to. And for most programming languages, why well, I just put in this exclamation mark equal sign, that typically means is not equal to, but in Lua, it's this tilde thing, this squiggly line here, this this little, this tilde, I think is what it's called, it's a squiggly little line. If you don't know where it is, press shift, and the button right above the tab key and below the escape key for Windows PC keyboards, that's going to show you the tilde, or give you the tilde, at least in America, keyboard, American keyboards. So tilde equals means not equal to, okay? So it means like, is 90, equ is 90 not equal to 100? Yes. We're going to switch it back to equals equals, or is equal to though. Get used to me saying equals equals, even though it's technically wrong, it's how I say it and you just as long as you understand and translate equals equals to is equal to will be okay. So Pythagorean theorem test equals math dot pound blah 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 one hundred equals or er, is equal to a hundred. This isn't actually going to be set to this whole thing. It's actually going to end up being set to true. 
Okay, that's what this whole thing is going to be evaluated to and replaced with once the script is running. And then this will just run and we can print yay Pythagorean theorem. Okay, and now if we go here and we press run real quick, then we're going to see yay Pythagorean theorem and okay, great, I'm happy for you. But reset and there you go guys. So I know it's another long video, two long videos in a row, both going over kind of the same subject and I've probably over talked about both of the subjects, but hopefully you've liked it. I'm not going to give a comment challenge this time. I might not be giving comment challenges anymore simply because, well, they kind of get spammy and I, nah, no thanks. So no comment challenge, possibly never going to be another one. Um, I hope you guys liked the video though, so if you did like the video, feel free to comment that you liked it, and if you didn't like the video, feel free to comment that you didn't like it. If you have any questions, comment, and hopefully me or somebody else who might be more knowledgeable on the particular subject can help you um, in the comments, or just post a comment because you feel like it, as long as you're not being disrespectful to somebody or um, just complete spam. Um, I am perfectly fine with it, so go ahead and post as many comments as you want. And also, please like this video if you actually liked it. If you didn't like it, well, please don't dislike it. I mean, you can, but I would rather you not. <laughs> I'd rather you just comment saying that you didn't like it and then tell me why you didn't like it so I can do better in the future. Thank you, guys. Hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you all later.